Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. Today's guest is beyond impressive. A guitarist since the age of six, Janet Robin got her start taking lessons from the legendary Randy Rhodes. In high school, she joined the all-female band Precious Metal Music and later toured with the Lindsey Buckingham Band, Meredith Brooks, Air Supply, and many other international artists. She now tours as a solo artist and also as a member of the instrumental all-guitar band, The String Revolution. I have seen Janet play, and she is absolutely incredible. No wonder she has been named as one of the top 10 female guitarists. Welcome, Janet. Oh, that's quite, wow, that's a lot to live up to. (laughs) I'll take it, you know, it's all good. So let me just start by asking you, why guitar? What drew you to that in the first place? Uh, You know, really it was was my brother, to be honest with you. I have two brothers and the middle brother uh, started taking guitar. He was really into music. Like I was always hearing Zeppelin and, you know, all all that 70s, great 70s music. And, uh, he started taking guitar and then I saw my mom was going to try it. And I was like, Oh, my mom, you know, and I just was like, you know, I'm going to try, I had tried everything like, you know, dance and, and karate and all these other things, you know, sports. And I, I didn't uh, have a connection to it on, and when they they took a lesson, uh, I actually went a- around five to the to the to the guitar store, and the the guy there was like, "Your your hands are too small. Come back next year." So uh, my brother kept taking lessons. My mom fell off, but I did. I came back at six, and I I tried it, and I just uh, you know I can't completely remember it, but I just it felt natural, you know, like in my hands. Uh, Even though like at the time it was like a big nylon string, big neck, and I I have actually quite small hands. I wasn't uh, intimidated by that. And I wasn't intimidated by anything, you know, maybe the sports, it was like all this competition, you know, and then the dance, same thing, all these other people in the class. This was like a one-on-one thing. And um, I really liked the intricacies of it. Um, And I think guitar over piano because you know I saw all these like rock star posters in my brother's room of Jimmy Page and all these people you know and I was like I, I want to I want they look cool I want to be like that you know and so that's how it started and I just kept going my brother's now a dentist so. oh funny <laughs> my mom my mom was a librarian you know so, <laughs> I'm, so I'm a rebel <laughs> that's funny so how did it feel the first time you ever got on stage? Well, I mean, it depends on which stage, because I, I absolutely remember the first time, like, any kind of stage, as far as with my guitar, was a talent show in second grade. Oh, wow. In the elementary school auditorium. And um, I, I, you know, I played Tom Dooley. <laughs> <laughs> Hang down your head. It's terrible like a terrible song like the words but anyway um i really enjoyed it i felt natural on stage you know uh you know a lot of people get nervous and stuff right and i think i'm just a performer you know even even at that young age but later when it was like a more professional thing uh i mean the the band precious metal our first show was in high school on the high school quad, you know, lunch time. And, you know, all my friends were there and we had a big sound system and everything. That was pretty cool. I just like stages, period. Do you ever get nervous? Do you ever get nervous? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think sometimes when it's, there's something new, like several new songs, new parts, um, I, I want perfection so much. I sort of freak myself out sometimes, but never enough to be like a uh, stage fright. I do not get stage fright. And, and usually the minute I'm on stage, something just kicks in, you know, and I'm just like, okay. I mean, after now, so many years of being on stage, you know, you just, you make it work. Um, but yeah, I can tell like, oh, I was a little bit more, you know, nervous and not in the moment sometimes if I'm playing too fast, you know, or, or something like that, you know, and I think that's natural. 
listen, if you weren't nervous or didn't have some kind of, you know, anxiety, a little anxiety about it, and then then you would just be bored, wouldn't you? Mm. <laughs> On stage, and no one no one wants to see a bored performer, you know. That would be true. Right. right. <laughs> so, what do you think has been the most difficult part of the music industry to you? All of it. <laughs> well, that was fast. <laughs> it's all it's all difficult. Any any time you decide to make a creative endeavor your career and to make a living off of it, it's all difficult because it's all subjective and. You may have, uh, you know, control over your, you know, what you what you put out um, in some in some ways, unless you're signed to a major label or something and they're like, you know, forcing you to do stuff. Um, not that all major labels have you do that. But, you know, my point is uh, anytime you're trying to sell like art, it's subjective. So you've got all these other people, you know deciding whether that's good enough to sell if they like it what do they want to buy i mean you know pardon me you're not just like doing a do a duty every day you know from nine to five taking home a certain amount of pay you know every day every week that you know which is which is great you know for some people right. um and it's steady and and all those things i don't think i've ever been like I'm conservative in some ways where, you know, structured and conservative in some, some of my deci decisions and things and in life and stuff. But, um, I've always been like wild child and, you know, free, free, let, let me run around and be a crazy person. I, I, I can't be in a box, you know, and I think it, it suits me. I do, I, I get bored, you know, if I have to do like the same thing for eight hours and just sitting there unless it's like a guitar part that I have to get, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I think that just, it's just by nature, a, a creative uh, process, uh, a creative art art that you're trying to sell is, is difficult. If you are trying to make a living at it, period. You know, and I've always thought too, with any creative field and any creative endeavor, I know for me, whenever I create anything, it's like a piece of you, like th this child of yours goes out into the world and you are, you're proud of it. You're protective of it, but also to, um, it becomes, it takes on a different momentum and a different, um, meaning than let's say if you're just creating widgets or something that you're not attached to, and it's not a piece of you. Yeah, that's true. And and over the years, I've had to learn some detachment mm. on a professional level uh, in order to keep fluid and keep mm. things moving. You know, I used to be really overprotective and really like almost just, well, I'm still a little OCD about things, you know, and I I don't know if that suited me that well. You know, maybe maybe when I was younger, you know, it helped with a few things, but I think it freaked a lot of people out and, you know, I had to like kind of just chill about some things in order to, to move my career forward. Mm. So let's say if talent is a given, why do you think some people make it and others don't? Oh, cl clearly because of, of it being a difficult, uh, non-stable situation. Uh, especially if you if you want to have a family and you you want to buy a house and you want to do all these things, you know, uh, I certainly had the grades to 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 become a lawyer, you know, or a doctor or something. Even though I'm I, I was well, not not into science or anything like that, but I I went to I went to UCLA. I had great grades. I did very well in school. I come from a highly educated family. Everybody is you know. A doctor dentist or whatever you know <laughs> um, and it just uh, I, I think some people need that security and it's it's too hard it's too unstable and also the what you were just talking about the personal rejection level of it all um, it was hard when I was younger yeah if I was rejected for for something or somebody didn't like my guitar playing or my song or I didn't get the audition in this band or whatever yeah you you do kind of take it personal 
And but then if you love what you do so much, you must move past that. You must move past that and decide, okay, is there a lesson that I can learn from that so that maybe the next time around I won't do that and it will help me move further. That's too much work sometimes for for people. Mm. Too much work and it's a bit selfish too. You know, it's very like it's all about you, you know, and that's that makes it difficult with relationships and family. I mean, there's so much, you know, um, and, and that's totally fine for other people mm -hmm. who want that, you know, because I, I, you're right. There's certainly so many people I know that have like these amazing voices and they just didn't, they didn't want this kind of life. Mm -hmm. It didn't suit them, you know, and that's totally great. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. It's you a know, battle. It's, it yeah. is a battle. Yeah. And you know, you hit on something too. And I think it's also realizing that not all criticism is coming from a place to just Tear you critical. Down. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Sometimes there are things that you really need to take to heart and adjust. And it's true. not everybody does that either. What I try to tell guitar students and, and people who want to be in the music industry is just look at the source. Okay. What, where's, what's the source of the criticism? <laughs> Who are they? What experience do they have? Because as much as what you just said is true, the opposite is also true. Some people sure. want to tear you down because right. they're jealous, they're envious, you know, myriad of reasons, or they're just assholes, you know. Can I, can I use that word on this podcast? <laughs> so <laughs> how have you put yourself in a position for the opportunities that you've had, you know, writing with Hart and touring with Lindsey Buckingham and all these kinds of things? never giving up mm. just keep moving forward learning always striving to, to get better on um, relentless uh pursuing of the, the the art form getting better at it learning as much as you can putting yourself out there taking chances all of the above Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's true for anybody, for example, starting a business or, you know, it's not only in this business. You know, it, that's the thing. This is a business. So if you want to make a living at it, you have to take chances. You have to take risks. You have to fail. Um, you have to get up again and start over. What's out of all of the things that you have done, what's been your fondest collaboration? Oh, definitely Lindsey Buckingham, you know, working, working with him and, and the, and the, and the ladies in heart, that was kind of a, they were, they were idols of mine growing up because as a, as a woman, you know, a little girl, there was not very many, you know, female rocker chicks that I was like, could identify with. And they were truly the only ones mm. uh, for me, that kind of music, the harder edge music. Um, but Lindsay came as a, as a surprise, always was like a Fleetwood Mac fan, but I'd never di dived so deep into that music. And, and he's such a guitar, you know, he's an under, under like appreciated guitar icon. You know, I think because he also fits in being an amazing songwriter and an amazing producer. He's not just this like one thing, you know, where he's like focused on that. He's so many things as to me and a, an amazing performer as well. He encompasses all of what to me is being a musician. And I really had no, no idea about that, about him. I knew he was a great guitar player, but until I got that gig and started working with him at the right time in my life, um, I, I always look back on that and think, how much it gave me. I mean, I, I've talked to other people about my time with Lindsay and I, I liken it to like, you know, getting sort of your master's degree, you know, <laughs> right? Or, or, you know, or working on your thesis or something like that. Whereas Precious Metal was great. I loved the girls and I was so young and that was like the 80s and rock and roll and, you know, all that. And we got signed and, you know, uh, but when I got the gig with Lindsay, you know, it was, a, it was another level. So that was like college for me, you know, and then, mm -hmm. then I went to this other level uh, with him. And, and, and from then on, I, I, I sort of never looked back um, at, at, at any kind of lower type of 
quality in as as to the music and the musicianship and the kind of what how I wanted to align myself with different other musicians in the from then on and how I saw myself and what could I expect from myself too. Mm, he really that. taught me. Um, he was a mentor. He continued sort of to be a mentor also after that gig. And he, he still is. I, I see him every once in a while and we talk and, you know, incredible, incredible person. Yeah. So what would then be your dream collaboration going forward? You could work with anybody that you haven't. I mean, anybody from Zeppelin, <laughs> you know, they're amazing. Um, you know, Robert or, or, or Jimmy. Um, but gosh, I mean, isn't it everybody's dream to like write a song with Paul McCartney? Yeah. You know, or just <laughs> like be in the room with him or a Beatle of any sort. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they're getting less and less. They are. Yeah, uh, but there's so many amazing people out there that would be so like interesting to work with. Mm. Just that I, I, I still like, I still find myself, you know, always like uh, wanting to experience somebody, something new. So there's really not just, unfortunately I can't answer your one question right. that way. Um, but yeah, like like childhood, dreams yeah i mean working with with the wilsons that's been fulfilled and and would i work with them again sure but it but it it's been fulfilled that that's amazing but i mean moving forward i mean lady gaga and you know all these like amazing people out there now mm. you know i because i know that you teach guitar so what do you look for in a guitar player or in a musician that you're mentoring or teaching the main thing i look for in in any musician or a student is is persistence and commitment that's all i look for interesting you know i i don't think that for example i may have some mu music dna in me because i know i have some relatives that played violin and and did you know my grandma played piano and was very artistic but I don't think I was a natural born musician. I don't. And I, I think, you know, I'm 55 and six, six to 55, that's a shitload of a long, a long time to, to play and be committed. And, and then, and then, you know, between 18, 17, and now having just this immense work of professional time, you know, with these, amazing artists and then also experience putting my own stuff out there and and going out on the road alone and doing all those things um that doesn't take talent <laughs> you know mm -hmm. that doesn't take musical talent i'm not saying ha not having musical talent doesn't help um that takes drive persistence commitment and, and I'm always trying to get better and better at my craft. And, and just by years of doing it, you do, you, you get better. Mm -hmm. My instincts are, are pretty spot on. My ears are so much better. I, so now, yeah, I consider myself more of a natural musician, you know, for example. But I don't think I was when I started. Like, like you hear of Mozart or these, or my teacher, Randy Rose, I think they were like these born, you know, you know, savants, right? So I just think if you're committed and, and, and you're determined and you practice, you know, and you learn, that's what I look for. Do you think it took you a long time to sound like you? Yes. Yeah. Sh fucking shitload a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, when I got into my 40s and 50s, you know, I started caring less about what people th thought about things. When I was younger... I really cared a lot. It, it affected me, you know, mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally. It really did. Uh, rejection and, and criticism and all these things, you know, it's just, it's very hard. I mean, I can see why so many artists, you know, turn to drugs and alcohol and, and all these things mm -hmm. because uh, it's tough. 
you know, it's really tough. I, I had therapy for 10 years and then relationships, you know, come and go. And I'm thankfully married now, you know, but it was took a long fucking time, man. Yeah. It ain't easy for anybody, right. you know, but, you know, this is a complicated life. You know, yes. uh, and I, I told that to my wife who, 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 when we started dating, I'm like, are you, are you sh sure you want this? Because I'm a complicated person and this life is complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not for everybody, you know, thankfully she's, you know, still here, <laughs> you know, but it's hard. It's, yeah. it's hard, uh, I think. Um, and so I had to, uh, accept certain things with myself. Mm. And I think with all of us, it's always an ongoing process too, as we Absolutely. continue to learn and grow. Yeah. No matter what job you have. Sure. Yeah. As long as you're open to that. Mm. So I have to go back and ask you a little bit yeah. about Randy Rhodes, because I have a cousin that would never speak to me again at any family function if I did not at least touch on this subject. So what what do you think you learned the most from him or took away from that time with him? Just what I just told you, you know, the, uh, the practice and the determination. You know, when I went to him, I started lessons on electric guitar around nine years old. So, I'm, so from six to nine, I was taking acoustic folk and stuff like that. And my brother started taking from Randy. We got a referral and it just so happened where he taught this, this school called Musonia. His mom owned it. It was right around the corner from where we grew up, you know, where, where my mom still lives. So that was easy for her, you know, to drop the kids off at guitar lessons. Um, you know, I went in there as a little tomboy and, you know, um, I, I had some preconceptions even at that age, which is really interesting that, you know, oh, maybe a girl sh shouldn't be doing that in some ways. But I, I just, nobody in my family was telling, no, a girl, you know, shouldn't do that everybody was supportive but I had grown up with my brother saying no you can't play with us you know you can't play football with your girl blah 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 so I think when I started with him uh none of that was coming from him mm. like, he could care less whether I was a girl or a boy okay so that was great and then also uh I had a little nerves about being so young you know, even at nine, I was aware, oh, I'm really young, you know, he's older, you know, and yeah, older, tw 20, you know, yeah. but 21, old. <laughs> right, old. Um, so I didn't know how that was going to be. I didn't know if he was going to take me serious. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what it was. And and I, I was serious. I had already fallen in love with the guitar and my brother was playing electric and I was like, I got to play electric too. You know, I got I got to do it, you know, so um. He's just so, was so straightforward, no nonsense. Uh, you got to practice. Um, the lessons were, you know, six dollars for like a half hour. Wow. You know, six. Then, then I think it went up to eight. You know, eight dollars. Uh, we sat in a little practice room. He had his, you know, at the time his his white Les Paul, little tiny Fender amp smoking you know drinking diet coke meanwhile the guy was like this big and i'm like yeah. why is he drinking diet coke you know and, uh giant thing of diet coke cigarettes and you know i'd walk in it was like i think my lessons were at one point they were like every monday night then i think they were on thursday nights isn't that interesting you know i remember they were always after dinner like seven seven thirty um and you know, he just, he just showed me, I think the, the, uh, he helped me develop discipline, mm. I think. And, and the, the, the sort of the prize that comes from doing it over and over and then, oh my God, I got it, you know, and that, that really helped me, I think all of that that i just said about him me being a girl and young and the discipline that completely changed my self-esteem mm. uh as as a young girl and i think it really say 
like kind of saved my life in some ways, you know, gave me purpose on, I didn't know, I know what kind of purpose do you have at nine, but I really wanted a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a purpose, you know, my brothers were, I like, I analyzed my brothers and I was the youngest and the only girl. And I was like, I want something, you know, I, I want to do something that makes me feel good. And, and I, I, I got attracted to the guitar. And then when I met him and he, you know, he was just, he would just play these things and you're just like, wait, what? You know, what did I just see? It was so amazing that the inspiration, that I saw him doing it and I was in the same room with him and he was telling me all these things. It made me feel like I could be like him. Yeah. You know, maybe not the same way, of course, because he would always say, don't try to be like me. Don't try to play exactly like me. Play like you, you know, but of course you're learning from him. So you're going to take a few things. But all of that, I think, in my early years really helped shape my self-esteem as, as a person, mm -hmm. definitely as a woman. Interesting. Yeah, that's the number one thing that I got from him. Do you think that there, because what I am quickly seeing and finding, because we met about a month or so ago at the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, Camp. Yeah. Um, and what I kept seeing and hearing is that hmm. the voice of women and the presence of women in rock and roll is underserved and underheard. Do you think that that's the case? It's certainly more, uh, it's certainly better now, you know, than, than before, but the voice of women is underserved and underheard in everything. But, mm -hmm. So, you know, has it gotten better for women in the music business? Yeah, there's more women executives, uh, more women, you know, in the business side. There's more women musicians. I have lots of young girls, you know, that come take lessons from me. But at the same time, bring the young boys too. I have young boys too, and I want them to take from a woman. You know, they come to me because I took from Randy mm -hmm. and I want them to take from a woman and, you know, grow up having that, having had it, that experience being taught, you know, from a woman, uh, rock and roll guitar, right? Specifically that because hard rock and metal, all this has always been always very misogynist. So I'm really glad when, when the young boys come to me. Mm. So there's that. Um, uh, I think, you know, it's, we're still fighting. Look, look, look at what's happening now. You know, some, some things, you know, legally we're going backwards in some ways, which is just, I don't want to get political, but you know, it's just like, what, wait, what? You know? So it's still, it's, it's still a thing for women. You know, I think it's, it's, it's gotten better as far as like a, a girl, you know, walking into Guitar Center and the the male salesman not immediately thinking, oh, this chick, you know, can't play. You know, she's a girl. I, I think that's gotten a little better, but it used that used to be the case. Well, you know, they just wouldn't take you serious. So now I think that's changed a bit because you don't know who's walking in there. And there's so many amazing women players out there not only in guitar, but in all, you know, in all fields of, of music. So What's a it's step not better, but it's still, it's still not. Yeah. What's a know. step do you think that we can take to correct that? More visibility, get mm -hmm. out there. Um, I also think play, choose some instruments that are maybe not typically, uh, you know, thrown into the female corner, you know, nothing gets violin or piano nothing against those instruments i love those but we are socialized i think uh to move women in that category yeah you know drums bass even guitar it's still not looked at as like a feminine type of instrument you know on um, encourage girls to try these things try these instruments they're not male or female instruments. They're just instruments. Yeah. You know, I get it with the female voice or male voice. Sure, you can tell that. But, you know, I always tell people, 
like when you listen to a guitar solo on a record, okay, not looking at a video or anything else, just on a recording, can you tell if it's a woman or a man playing? Right. You cannot. So as much as I like, you know, these titles of, oh, you know, top 10 female guitarists, this and that, sure, those things can help, you know, and, and I admit I use them for my press and whatever, but perhaps I shouldn't. You know, maybe I'm part of the problem because there should not be a category, for example, women guitar players, women drummers. I, I don't I don't understand why there's a category for these things. Mm. And, and on the other hand, I understand because there are so few and far between uh, in conjunction with male players that perhaps we do have to set ourselves aside to make our own category to stand out to get some visibility so mm -hmm. like part of me is like for that and the other part is like not for it <laughs> yeah no i i completely it, understand that it, it's my it's one of my favorite words a conundrum <laughs> <laughs> no i completely understand that because I, I i think people when anybody comes on the scene of anything they try and put whoever it is into a box that they know that 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 is true even not even talking about gender style right. of music right. and right. yeah all those you're you're right it's, and i find that especially true in the united states hmm. not to interrupt your thought but so much of my solo touring was in in europe they mm -hmm. do not quite do that there they 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 don't look so much at gender or style of music if they just, if they like your music doesn't matter Love they it. like your music they, they don't ask how old you are, you know, they, these crazy things that we do out here. I think because they grow, they're so, they're so older, you know, the, they're older countries and they grow up with such long cultural history, you know, mm -hmm. of, of art artisans, yeah. music, you know, uh, architecture, you know, painters, all they're, they're not thinking about all these things. They, they only are thinking purely of the art. They like it. They like it. Like, for example, many of the festivals I would play in Europe, it wasn't like all metal bands. You know, you'd have like a metal band play. And then right after that, be like a three three piece country band. <laughs> and then after that, it'd be like a jazz quartet. And, and everybody in the audience would stay. Mm. You buy one ticket to the festival and you watch the whole thing. Love that. I think that's great. And that's why I think I, I did really well over there. Mm. because I I personally don't really fit in a category my my solo work is all over the place it's all it's styles all kinds of styles and when I started touring and doing solo work I was considered old here you know um you know I started at like 28 you know putting out my first record that's old yeah right? yeah but you know over there they really could give a shit you know, yeah. they like your songs and they like you. And they, I think they also really, um, the Europeans, that is, or people outside of America. And I, I really am not dissing America, but I'm showing the differences. I think they really appreciate passion. Yeah. Also, you know, yeah, really appreciate like your love and your passion and your dedication to it. And I have to say, it is so evident in you when you play because... I know as somebody who cannot play an instrument, cannot sing a note, I could feel what you were feeling by watching you, oh, which that's, was pretty that's, powerful. That's like so great. Thank, I mean, I am honored that you you felt that. Um, and that's what artists should do. They sh we should share that feeling that we're getting and, 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 and share it with the listener or the person looking at the painting or whatever it is, we want you to feel something. Mm -hmm. But that's what art art is about. We want you to feel, and it may, it may not be exactly what we're feeling too. You might get a different feeling from it, which is also a really cool thing about right. art, right? Because no, no two people look at the same painting the same way, you know, or hear a song the same way. Uh, but I appreciate that so much, you know, that's, that's to me, that's just like, that's like my family, you know, like we don't have children. So that that's like my family, you know, like when people say things like, like that to me, or, 
you know, your song helped me through my, my, my mother dying or this and that or something like that. I just, it just, uh, it's wonderful. Mm. It's not, it's not, not an ego thing. It's like a, like I said, it's like a family thing, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, and I, I feel that too, by the way, when I go listen to, to somebody and, or look at a painting or go, go watch a film or something. If I feel something, I'm like, wow, it just does. That's the connection that I think art and all of this, you know, brings to humankind. Agreed. You know, for, for without sounding too, you know, esoteric. <laughs> well, I have four final questions for you. Sure. First one is what's the best piece of advice you are ever given? Don't give up. My share dad, my dad. Share with us one thing on your bucket list. Yeah, to play with a beetle. I mean, come on, right? A beetle. Okay. Any beetle. There's only two. So take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got I got close. You know, like I do this crazy fast rendition, instrumental rendition of of uh, Here Comes the Sun, and um, and uh, the George Harrison estate tweeted it out, like uh, my my video I did of it. Um, and I was at an event where Donny Harrison was. That's George's son, and I, I went up to him and I, I just said, you know, your your team, your your estate, you know, treat, tweeted out my version of of your dad's song, you know, one of my favorite songs. And he's like, oh, you're you're the girl who did that, you know. And I was like, you 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 know. He's like, oh yeah, I know it. I I'm I am the estate, you know. I I uh, approve everything that goes out. And I was like, oh my god, you know, thank you so much. And and he looks so much like his dad. Really? Like I, you should take a look at George Harrison's son. It's really like ghostly, you know. <laughs> he looks just like him. It's such a nice guy. But so I came close to that. <laughs> There's still well, time. <laughs> there is. There is. We're yeah. still holding out for one of the other two. Right. So when the toy companies get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? Well, that's easy. Come on now. One on the left hand, you know, the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar in the right hand. So Perfect. there you go with that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and how do people find you? And also tell us about the String Revolution and what's coming up with that. Um, well, you can look me up. I'm just JanetRobin.com. Uh, the String Re Revolution is TheStringRevolution.com. And basically, it's all the same on, on all of our social medias. Uh, the String Revolution came uh, came together after um, my solo work. I I I'm, I still do some of it, but I'm slowing down a little bit on that to focus more on the String Revolution. Um, I wanted something more guitar focused, and I I came up with this idea of having multiple guitars doing different things on on the guitar to make it sound like a band, maybe playing you know hitting hitting the guitar like a drum maybe using a baritone guitar that sounds like a bass you know and and combined with my time in Lindsay's band where we had five guitar players he he had put this like guitar orchestra together i i was thinking something along the lines of that but making it more instrumental uh so i put that band together seven years ago we've put out different releases um we have since become a, a, a trio and um, you know, are really proud of our Spotify channel, four million streams. Uh, and this year we put out, you know, full circle. Now we put out a, a really cool version. I think it's really cool, unique version of Crazy Train. Uh, all instrumental, and we were honored enough to to have a guest on it. Steve Stevens from Billy Idol is playing the guitar solo on it because he too is also a Randy Rhodes fan. And that all came together because last year, Randy was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which I attended with his family uh, who were there. And um, I wanted to do something special, you know? And, and so uh, that did really well for us. And we're still, you know, sort of pushing that out there. And we are now a trio and now COVID and everything stopped our, our touring, but we're looking at 2023 to getting back out there on the road. Uh, we just played a couple shows the last few months locally, mm -hmm. and we're slowly like doing a few more like that, just getting our feet wet again, 
and we're looking to to hit the road 2023 so I'd say you know check out the website for more information on that you can sign up on our newsletter uh, on the website on on this the string revolution.com we're the string revolution on Facebook string the string revolution on Instagram I'm Janet Robin uh, music on Instagram and then just Janet Robin on Facebook and I, I you know combine the two a lot and co-promote the two but yeah very very grateful to have that that project and and I'm uh, solo wise I'm concentrating on a a, a, re, a, a blues recording oh right, right now unique blues recording I'm doing that here in my studio um plans to release that maybe next year if I can get everything together there's two volumes of it so I'm working on on that it's it's sort of slightly historical too I'm taking old recordings from the early 20s and I'm putting new instrumentation on top and I'm uh, kind of showcasing the history of where where guitar c- comes from, where the rock and roll guitar that we know now. It's just all from blues, all of it. Yeah. So I'm sort of like trying to showcase that by doing these uh, kind of special remix versions of these old blues songs. And so that's where my life is now. You know, those those two projects, uh, teaching, doing some sessions. I was doing, I'm doing somebody's record right now here in my studios. That's why I'm tired today and was up till two in the morning. So I love doing that too, working on other people's music, completely different than mine and being sort of a producer, you know, Mm -hmm. and lending my skills to another artist. Love, love that. So, you know, not not complaining. I hope that one of these tours brings you to Raleigh, North Carolina, so I can see you again in person. I love North Carolina. I've played uh, many times in Charlotte. I, I can get to Charlotte. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Love the South and, and uh, again, the birthplace of blues guitar. So I would love to get out there and uh, I just want to get out on the road and play again. Yeah. So, and thank you so much for your amazing photos you took. Oh, well, thank you. It was an honor to meet you, to hear you play, to get to have this conversation with you. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit marlenasemenza.com.